but hello everyone, thank you for having us here today. My name is Anthony Segura. I'm a project manager um, working on the SoCaran Regional Energy Network programs. Um, I have my colleague, uh, Code Bruder, who is a program manager. Um, and we're here today to talk about a great opportunity for um, Southern California agencies, but also agencies within the San Joaquin Valley CEO territory. This is known as the heat pump water heater opportunity. Um, this is what we like to call a quick win or a great incentive uh, right now because this is a program opportunity where agencies could get involved. Um, some agencies can get a full 100% upgrade or an 80% um, project support depending on some program criteria, which my colleague Cove will go into more into depth later. Um, but we look forward to presenting this opportunity. And if there are any questions towards the end of the slides, uh, you'll have our contact information but I'd like to hand it off to Code um, to get this party started. Perfect. Thanks, Anthony. All righty. So as Anthony mentioned, I'm the program manager here for this offering, and uh, I'll be going through A to Z, all this offering has for us here, as well as the process to which you guys can expect when going through uh, this program. Really excited about this opportunity. Um, it's uh, very, very lucrative for agencies and at a great time when uh, a lot of our uh, agencies are thinking and the forefront of their minds are regarding um, switching over to electric equipment, whether it is in the kitchen, your space heating, or what we're talking about here, your water heater. So to tee us up here, you guys kind of already got the tagline. Uh, we will cover up to 100% of the eligible project costs, which we will go into on what those costs are and what they include. They're very extensive. Um, for heat pump water heater installations, um, and that is replacing a natural gas water heater with an all electric heat pump water heater. Um, so that will be for underserved agencies at that 100% clip. And then the 80% clip is for all other eligible facilities. And on the right there, I'll draw your attention down here. How do we determine our underserved facilities? Uh, we primarily use Cal Enviro screen. Um, you can see here we have some uh, layers that we also put on top of it. Uh, low in income communities defined by the California Department of Housing and Community Development, as well as the rural urban commuting area codes and assessment to uh, signify our hard to reach and rural agencies. Um, there's also one other one, uh, Title I schools. We will consider that an underserved uh, facility for the 100% uh, coverage there. Um, so I'll touch a little bit on eligibility here. Um, it's really going to come down to the size and the efficiency rating of what we are installing. Um, so when we're selecting equipment to go in, uh, in place of that natural gas equipment, um, it's going to have to meet a criteria of both size and efficiency rating. Um, and then to note what your facility has to have in it already, I've noted it has to be a natural gas water heater. And it, the facility also has to be serviced by SCE. Um, so those are the big requirements on whether or not your project is going to be eligible. We'll touch a little bit more on that in a coming slide. All right. So. Advancing here to talk a little bit about the eligible costs. I mentioned they are extensive. Um, so here they are listed out. Um, so the heat pump water heater itself will be covered. The contractor labor, the capping of the existing gas line with a brass plug, demolition of any existing vent necessary, um, installation of the water heater electrical hookup. A lot of these are 240 volts, which means we need a hookup um, for that voltage. And then uh, running any necessary electrical wire. And you'll see here that electrical panel upgrades have an asterisk next to it. Um, and that is because we will potentially fund the electrical panel upgrade, but that is seen on a case by case uh, basis. Um, if costs get out of hand when replacing uh, the electrical panel, um, our program will not be able to cover that at the 80 or 100% clip. Um, but again, we'll assess that as they come up. 
So those are the eligible costs. I'll uh, go forward here. Let's talk a little bit about screening. Um, so what are we targeting? Right now, again, we're targeting natural gas uh, water heaters between 30 and 100 gallons. Now that's not a hard limit. If we have uh, water heaters that are above 100 gallons, we're gonna take that at a case by case situation. The reason why we're noting 30 to 100 gallons here is because of lead times. 30 to 100 gallons are seen as kind of off the shelf units. And once you get larger than that, you see some, some lead times um, that can delay the project. Um, so again, we'll, uh, we'll take those into consideration on a case by case situation. So now the existing efficiency rating, um, looking at uh, a 0.81 uh, thermal efficiency and below. Um, and then again, facilities served by SCE. Now here's a big one, installation in 2023. So this is a program that is approved for this year. That means we have to have all construction complete by the end of this year, December 31st, everything installed and functional. Um, so we are not approved for 2024 quite yet. Um, and so right now we can't promise any projects that plan for a construction to end in 2024. So that's a big one to note. Um, and then to assess your eligibility as well, we need the equipment location details. And that is uh, a long way of saying, we need to know what facility it's at to note, hey, the address, so we know if it's a disadvantaged community um, facility or not, and also what type of building it is in. So for example, if it's in a city hall, that's an assembly building type, um, police headquarters, so on and so forth. Um, so you'll see on the right, we do have a, a checklist that can be used. It does not have to be used to get your units um, assessed. You can just send us the nameplate photos of your existing water heaters and the location details. Hey, this one's at a city hall. Uh, this one's at the uh, police department, so on and so forth. Um, and we can do the assessment just like that. So that's everything about the eligibility assessment phase. I'll advance a slide here. This is the process. So one through seven, A to Z, whatever you want to say. Uh, we just talked a lot about number one. Um, that's the eligibility assessment phase where we get those nameplate photos from y'all. Um, if you can't get us the nameplate photos, whether it's capacity reasons, um, whether it's anything that's, you know, preventing you from getting us our nameplate photos that we need, we do have engineers that we can deploy, take a look at your existing water heaters and make that eligibility assessment uh, for y'all. Um, so we want to make sure that capacity on the agency's end is, is not going to limit us here. So that's number one. Number two, um, right here, customer procurement of contractor. Now, there is a lot of options we have here. And it's going to be based on the preference of each agency. So I'll list out some of our options and what we can do to assist in these options. First, the one that most people know and use, a formal bid. So if we need a formal bid, um, and, and we'll talk a little bit about that after the eligibility assessment phase, we'll go in, have a procurement meeting, discuss each of the procurement options, discuss the thresholds that each agency has, so on and so forth. And if it comes back, hey, we need a formal bid, um, that's totally fine. Again, we have engineers get on site, build you tech specifications, technical specifications, um, go ahead and get some contract language um, that'll make sure that the uh, bidders are all up to date on what this program is um, and exact and know exactly what needs to go in where. Um, and our engineers can help with that. We can also help with the um, review of each bid, make sure it's comprehensive and cost effective. Um, so we can help on both ends of that. We can also, uh, do a piggybacking um, type procurement 
which we have a few agencies that are going out to formal bid right now that have piggybacking clauses in their formal bid. So when those are awarded, those piggybacking clauses will be live and ready for other agencies to use. So those are a couple options. We also have options like single source and uh, an informal bid if it's below certain thresholds for each agency. So what we've done is reached out to over 200 local contractors and requested um, information such as their licenses, um, cost quotes, and lead times for equipment. Um, and what we got back uh, was a handful of interested parties to be in our preferred contractors list. Um, and so we vetted those out and we have right now a top three in which we can use to get you three informal bids very, very quickly. Um, and we can also use that list to single source to any of the contractors in which the agency prefers. So we really want to remove barriers for our agencies to get to construction start as quickly as possible. And so those are all the options we have for procurement and we're willing to work again with whatever the agency is comfortable with. So after that, um, we get on the right path for procurement. We got to talk about cost estimation. So a job walk. Um, so let's say after the eligibility assessments, we note during the procurement chat, hey, single source is a great option. Okay, let's go ahead and get both our engineers, our project manager, and the preferred contractor on site, walk the job, and get a cost quote from the contractor. From that cost quote, we're going to know exactly how much it's going to cost, um, and we're going to know exactly who is going to be on the hook for exactly how much during this project. Um, and that's where we move on to the reserve incentives phase or number four here. So we have two major forms after the job walk, a customer agreement. So again, a theme here is removing barriers for agencies. And so one of the things we wanted to do is give the option for SoCalREN to pay the contractor directly. So let's say that your project is covered at 100% cost, then we'll be able to pay 100% of the project cost directly to the contractor, and it doesn't have to touch the agency's books at all. Um, and it can be, you know, a customer agreement is essentially telling us where the incentives are going to go. We can pay the agency directly, or we have another option to pay that contractor directly, and that customer agreement will tell us that. So that's signed, and then based on the cost quote from the job walk, um, we do an incentive reservation form, um, which reserves the incentives out of our pool of funds and sets them aside before you guys start construction. So we know and we're confident that once construction is complete, we have the exact amount of money to pay the contractor, make them whole and close out the project. So those are the two major forms that we sign, step four there. Um, and we make sure that it's very, very clear exactly how much each party is paying, hopefully as close to zero uh, for each agency. So after four, we move to the easy stuff. Five, construction, get everything installed. Six, uh, installation reports in which we get on site, we inspect that everything, everything is installed properly, it's working, it's meeting demand, everything is, is functioning to the satisfaction of the customer. And then number seven, pay out the contractor's invoice or if selected, pay directly to the agency. So that's everything. Um, we, hope to, we hope that's as streamlined as possible for y'all. Um, and so far it has been, and it's been wonderful. So that's the process. I'll move on here. A lot of questions we get are revolving around energy savings. And so um, the energy savings that you'll see on each unit replacement is massively dependent on the existing equipment, how old, how inefficient is the existing natural gas water heater, and how efficient 
um, is the new electric heat pump going in. And also it relies a lot on uh, the utility bill rates of the facility. Um, so now your gas rate comes into play, your electric rate comes into play, and uh, it's a relatively complex um, kind of calculation in comparison to a traditional, um, you know, like for like replacement of, of an item, right? And so what we've seen as far as uh, savings, we've seen it as high as 250,000 KBTUH a year. Um, and that's equivalent to roughly 13,000 annual utility bill savings, which is great. Um, so again, that's a very, very round and rough estimate. Um, each project will be different and we can do that analysis for each facility as desired by the agency. So a, a couple last notes here. Um, heat pump water heaters are an incredible fit for facilities with solar. That's essentially taking your water heating end use off of your uh, electricity bill and going with your on-site generation to service that end use. Excellent pairing there. And also heat pump water heaters can be programmed to draw energy during off-peak hours, saving you money in that four to nine window um, and drawing down your peak usage, which is excellent. So, with that, I'll note some uh, tools and resources that we do have. Um, we have a flyer that can be shared that covers everything um, that I went over today. I noted our trusted contractors list that pairs well with our manufacturer's cost and lead time list. Um, so we have some cost quotes from our contractors. We also have some lead times um, for different manufacturers and different size equipment. Um, so using that, we can make sure we craft the most time efficient and cost effective project for each one of our agencies. Um, and with that, I think that's that's it. I, our contact information is on the screen here. So if you have any uh, questions, feel free to reach out um, and we'll make sure we get back to you right away. Perfect. Right. Thank you, Code. Um, again, this is a great opportunity. Um, as Code mentioned, this is a uh, for projects looking to be installed in 2023, um, we are hopeful to continue supporting and, and serving um, all the agencies with this great opportunity. Um, just want to thank everyone's time, um, especially um, our regional partner, um, SJB CEO. Thank you for this opportunity. Um, again, this is our contact information. Um, please do not hesitate to reach out. We're more than happy to connect um, you and your team with additional resources on the heat pump water heater opportunity, but also other great services that we can provide for your energy efficiency needs. Thank you again. Have a great day.